I'm Evan Yamanishi. I am the Accessibility Lead and Co-Director of the Norton Lab at WW Norton Company. This year, I, I think, I mean, I'm thinking about it in comparison to last year a little bit. I appreciate the balance of discussion in, in, in areas, disciplines, uh, use cases that um, are included here. It was good to see more people from industry here, from the for-profit world as well. I think that's important to represent that. Is there a business use case for annotations? So much of the discussion about annotations here is about using it as a, a tool for open collaboration, open discourse, which is great. I'm a big fan, big fan of that. But I think any ecosystem is improved by having multiple different perspectives. So I really appreciate that from, from this conference. Anybody here, to be honest, I would love to reconnect with. I mean, obviously, Hypothesis, um, I really enjoyed. I didn't talk to uh, Ron, I think, Ron from uh, JSTOR. I've talked with him in the past. We've talked with JSTOR Labs about the work that they're doing on um, the Shakespeare annotation project, and, and they are making it extendable so that anybody can use that same type of API. Um, I would love to collaborate with them for any of our works so students can quickly get to the JSTOR references for any of our works as well from within our works. So often students have access to JSTOR at their college and they're reading their textbooks. It's just an obvious and easy collaboration there. Um, hypothesis, I would love to allow our students to annotate in our books and publish it to their classroom, but also maybe the world, and Hypothesis is a great solution for that, I think, uh, or, or different groups that they're part of that are not necessarily class-based. Um, I think the work that, that uh, the academic groups are doing is really interesting. I'd love to do some research with Remy, for instance, maybe, or um, any, I mean, we've been working with Michelle Sprouse on this too. Um, user research and how people are annotating would be really interesting. We are just generally, as uh, publishers of books traditionally and um, now increasingly digital content, interested in annotation generally. I think a lot of our business model is centers around annotation, whether it's uh, annotation of textual content in digital form or in print form. I think historically everything is, everything has been annotation. <laughs> it's a big part of our business model, I would say. Even, even if it isn't officially web annotations, it's still an annotation of content because oftentimes it's uh, academic scholars who are annotating existing works. That's one of the main things that we are known for. So when we first started talking about web annotations, I think uh, we kind of had a uh, existential discussion about what annotations are and what Norton's values are and what, uh, what our value is to uh, various different communities. Um, a lot of what we do already is annotation. So I think like the Norton Anthology of English Literature, for instance, is largely annotation of the text. That's the real value of it. It's obviously the curation of the text into a, you know, a unit, something that you can carry around and use as a trophy, but also the uh, analysis that you get from editors and scholars, the glosses, the terms that you may not know, all of these things are basically annotations. Web annotations to allow the user to interact with the text more interactively. Uh, obviously, in, in all the English courses and everything, we talk about textual engagement and interacting with the text in a meaningful way, interacting with the author. Uh, sometimes it's a little more metaphorical. Web annotations makes it 
literal. You're actually interacting with it. You highlight, actually type an annotation. It's there. It's an engagement with the text at a level that is much more discreet and explicit than sometimes it is in other areas. In addition to that, since we work in co the college space a lot, um, there are a lot of applications for interacting with the text and your classroom together and the instructor and giving insight into how you're thinking about the text in that way. I think one of the big priorities for us is rebuilding our ebook reader. And a big part of that is going to be annotations and the extent to which we privilege annotations and the user experience, um, whether or not it's an afterthought, something that is kind of hidden from students, or whether it's something that's really prominent is a discussion that we need to have internally. Um, but also, if we are going to really uh, promote it a lot, there's, there's a lot we need to do around that, but I think it, it'll be worth it. Uh, I'm excited to have a really rich annotation environment and maybe get some good analytics and allow different groups to maybe do some research into how people are engaging with text. That's our plan, essentially. It's on our roadmap already to implement XAPI for across all of our platforms for more rich analytics and more uh, richer eventing, essentially, so that we can understand how students are engaging with everything. Working on a bunch of different things. I think the thing I'm most focused on lately is accessibility, because it's a big blocker for anybody in the education space, I would say. Annotations are good. All of the user affordances that they give you are really great. You can really democratize the text in interesting ways and creates a more egalitarian world, I would say, even. There's a lot of this, this big thinking that people are, are thinking about, but I'm thinking about who are we leaving behind there. And if we don't make it accessible, is it even worth using it? Um, a lot of schools will tell, tell us, no, we're not going to use something that's not accessible. You create some new online tool and it's not accessible, we're not going to use it. Uh, that's a big barrier for us. Um, and it's one of the unsolved aspects of, except, uh, of web annotations so far. I've been talking with various people today about how to make a lot of the different aspects of annotation accessible. So the highlighting part of it, the actual linking of an annotation to the document, how do you make that accessible? Because ideally the annotation doesn't exist in the document necessarily. Um, and then on top of that, I'm thinking a lot about how we can use annotation to, to increase the accessibility of content. I think, uh, for instance, having a community that goes around the web and annotates images with descriptions of the images, and maybe screen reader users are aware that that community exists and turns on those annotations. and suddenly content that a content author never authored adult text for is accessible to people. Um, that's, I mean, publications, yeah, that's probably one use case, but I think one of the more interesting use cases for it would be uh, all of the image memes and stuff that happen these days. There, there's a large community that's left out of that whole experience sometimes. And uh, there are communities that would would gladly describe them. And the description of them is, in itself is an interesting process as well that could create a whole comment thread about how, how to describe this meme, like what is the meme.